Hi, this is Mr. Sonic here to explain superheroism. But first, we have to talk about the subconscious mind. In the late 1890s, this man, a doctor in Vienna named Sigmund Freud, developed ideas about the subconscious mind, a thing that had never before been identified and the existence of which many people doubted. A patient may come to him saying that they repeatedly dream of drowning and are irrationally afraid of the water. They know how to swim and have never had a near drowning experience or any other bad experience with water, yet the thought of stepping into deep water, even a bathtub, positively terrifies them. Freud might say that a hidden part of the person's mind is fearing not the water itself, but something that the water represents. Freud thought everything, positively everything, was because of suppressed sexual feelings, and that the water represented sexual feelings that the person was afraid to let themselves feel. The idea of being submerged in water represented a loss of control over desires that the person found frightening, inappropriate, or disturbing. Another example is a common dream. A person dreams fearfully of having their feet caught in the mud or something. Their feet and legs are running, but the dreamer can't make progress as a deadly predator approaches. A psychiatrist today might say that the dreamer is afraid of some other threat in their real life, like adult responsibility, or the judgment of some important person in their life, and that they are worried that they will not be up to the task. They're afraid they aren't good enough and will fail. Whatever you think of all that, you have to admit that there are some things we feel that don't make rational sense. At night, when we dream, a part of our minds that we aren't consciously aware of tells stories that often don't make sense. They make sense while you're dreaming, but in the light of day, they defy logic. Our conscious mind can't make sense of our dreams. That's because dreams are created by the subconscious mind, and the subconscious doesn't care about logic. So after World War I, people stopped scoffing at Freud's ideas. Maybe there was something to it. Artists began trying to create art that was illogical and dreamlike. They called themselves surrealists. The prefix sur means beyond, so surrealists were trying to depict things that were beyond reality. One well-known surrealist is a Belgian artist, René Magritte. At first glance, his paintings look conventional enough, but after a moment you find they contain strange and illogical images, like a house at which it's night here at the front door, but daytime with a bright blue sky above the trees. Or a man wearing a bowler hat with a big green apple floating in front of his face. Or a rain shower of hundreds of that same man falling from the sky. There was the one in which a man and a woman kissed passionately with their heads cloaked in fabric. They are embracing, but they can't actually see the other person. Maybe it's saying something about love and self-delusion. It's like a dream. Your conscious mind doesn't understand it, but the image makes you feel something, like you're trying to remember something but can't quite get at it. This famous painting by Salvador Dali, The Persistence of Memory, features melting clocks, and this thing that looks like maybe a weird anatomical combination of a nose and an eye, all set against a desolate landscape. A black fly lands on the face of one clock. Another of the clocks has ants crawling out of a small hole. It generates feelings of disgust and discomfort. Do the melting clocks represent the fluidity and subjectivity of memory? Do the insects imply the death and decay of time? If that's what it means to you, then that's what it means. The artist doesn't interpret it for you. In The Barbarians, Max Ernst painted what looks like giant menacing monsters, maybe fighting each other, or maybe they're dancing. They look like they're made of some elements that come from birds, some from humans, and some from something else. Is the one on the left female? Is the one on the right male? What is that vulture-looking thing on its arm? Near the bottom of the picture is what looks like a human woman holding onto something bird-like, maybe the offspring of the woman and one of the bird monsters. This one is more a nightmare than a dream. It was painted nine years after the end of the war that traumatized the entire world. Maybe there's a connection there. The rational mind can't answer that question with any certainty. Writers created surrealism as well. It was mainly a French movement. André Breton wrote poems that don't make literal sense, but they use a clear grammatical ordering of the words, what we call syntax, and include images that are clear enough that they seem to make some kind of emotional sense. 
Contained in this poem from a book of poetry titled The White-Haired Revolver, these are translated from French, are these lines. He's coming. It's the glass-toothed wolf who eats up time in little round boxes, who blows the overpungent fragrances of herbs, who smokes little guide fires in the turnips at evening. I love Breton's poems, but can't exactly say why, because they defy rational interpretation. They definitely aren't nonsense like Dada was. I can see the wolf with long glass teeth, eating time and blowing the fragrance of sage and rosemary. What does smoking guide fires in turnips mean? Are round boxes that contain time clocks? I don't know. They don't sound like metaphors to me. They sound like literal descriptions of a dream. If you look at the lyrics of songs anytime since the psychedelic 1960s, like these from the Beatles, you can easily find the influence of surrealism on popular music. And if you ever get tired of analyzing literature, try surrealism. I guarantee you, you will leave it with its mystery intact, because it doesn't depict reality. It's about something beyond, or maybe beneath, reality. Have fun exploring surrealism. Sweet dreams. <laughs> <laughs>